This video is the first of four which will discuss how to design a house to be as flood resistant as possible. Part 1 focuses on the varied causes of flooding. Hi, I'm Daniel of Daniel Clark Architect. This video is for anybody interested in building a new house or remodeling an existing one and is concerned about the potential threat of a flood. This is the first video in a series of four where I will discuss designing a house to be as floodproof as we possibly can. The first video is going to discuss the different causes for a flood. The second video will look at the different risks of a flood and how a community and even households themselves can best prepare for a flood. The third video is going to look at how you can prepare the landscaping, the site itself, to best prevent water from getting into your house. And the fourth video is going to look at if if the water does get into the house, what can you do to best survive? You might not think that a flood might impact you or that you're highly at risk. Not everyone lives in a high risk zone, but everyone does live in a potential flood zone. City, regional and other local governments publish flood risk maps and they establish a flood level, an elevation at which over the course of a century might be generally considered to be a safe elevation at which to build. However, these flood risks are based on historical weather data. Scientists generally agree that the climate is changing and these historically based flood elevations are no longer relevant or accurate. There's a good chance that your house might face a flood risk of some sort in the near future. Why is this important? Well, typical house construction is highly susceptible to damage and destruction by floods. As that climate changes, storms are stronger. They're more intense. The average sea level is rising. As the global temperature rises, we have warmer weather over the oceans. That warmer air picks up more moisture. You've heard lately of the phenomenon called an atmospheric river. In addition to atmospheric rivers, hurricanes and typhoons where they occur become stronger. Combine that with the sea level rise and the water makes its way further inland. That extra strong storm brings more moist air inland and dumps it in more intense storms. As a result of this, you'll have as much as what was typically a month's worth of rain falling in just a couple of days. That's what we've seen around the world throughout 2021 with major flooding in Asia, in Europe, in North America, and so far in 2022 as well. As this extra water falls in a very short period, that rain saturates the soil so that it can't soak up anymore. The water will literally rise up out of the ground and start to flow along the surface. The rivers that normally drain the area, they start to over spill their banks and flood the surrounding area. So with this water flowing along the surface of the ground, it's picking up the top layer of soil and washing it away. That's essentially what a mudslide is. The waterlogged soil starts to become destabilized. It will go too. You might even have something called a flash flood, even in the middle of downtown Vancouver, for example, the drainage system becoming overwhelmed by the quantity of water. And that flash flood is a very quick rise in the water level locally. In this first video, I've covered the different causes of flooding and how it can impact people pretty much anywhere. In part two of this mini-series, I'm going to start to list the different risks that a flood poses and also how a community can best prepare itself and how a household can be best prepared for a flood event. If you're eager to start discussing implementing these strategies in your next project, feel free to get in touch with me by booking a project consultation call from my website.